Okay, so we're covering basic probability here in this video. Um, we're going to start with the first definition, which is called the classical approach. In that definition, we start with a formula, the probability of A. So this is just basic probability. That means it's going to be a single fraction, and the fraction is going to have this following structure. It's going to be the number of ways A can occur divided by the number of total possible outcomes. Number of total possible outcomes. So let's look at a problem here to illustrate how this works. If we start with a problem like the probability that we roll a 3 on a single die, then that can be broken down into a fraction fitting this format. So the number of ways A can occur in this case will be the number of threes on the die, right? That's how it'll translate. So the number of, so we look in here and we say, well, what are we dealing with? Threes, so number of threes on the die. And once you have that, the next thing is going to be to look at the denominator of the fraction, which is going to be the number of po total possible outcomes. So you'll say number of total possible values on the die. OK, so the die is six-sided, so we should be able to figure that out pretty easy. There'll be six total possible values that are available on the die. The number of threes on the die should just be one, right? So our fraction becomes one because there's only one three on the die. And the number of total possible values on the die, well, there are six numbers that are possible on the die. So that's the probability that I roll a three on a die. Once you set up the structure here on top, the problem becomes pretty easy. It just becomes really a counting problem at that point. You have to count how many threes on the die, count how many total possible outcomes. And then you can leave it as a fraction, or you can convert it into a decimal in percent. Let's just leave that as a fraction. All right, so that's one approach. That's one way to work with basic probability. That's the classical approach. And the reason why they call it the classical approach is because if you look at the structure, it's implying that we can infer all of this in our head, right? We can think about the die and say, how many ways can a three occur? We can think about how many threes there are on a die. We can think about how many total possible outcomes there are on the die. But there are some cases where we're not able to do that. So when we have scenarios where that's not so simple, uh, for example, would be if you're looking for the probability of you know, blue eyes in the population. The probability if I randomly select an individual that that individual has blue eyes. That's a lot harder to do in our heads. We can't think about how many total people there are in the world easily. We don't know that number precisely. And we certainly don't know the number of people with blue eyes, right? That wouldn't be something we'd be able to just think about and come up with. So instead, we're going to have another approach. And this approach is going to be often called the empirical approach because it involves going out into the population and collecting a sample. And then based on that sample, you estimate the probability. So the structure of the fraction um, is very similar, but not quite the same. It's going to say still number of, but now since we're drawing a sample, we'll say number of observations having trait A, number of observations having that trait of, say, blue eyes, right? Divided by the total number of observations. OK, so that's the structure of the fraction at this point. So it's very similar to the other one. We have a number of over the total, right? But in this case, it's the number of observations having the trait divided by the total number of observations made in the sample. So let's take an example problem. This one I'm going to take from um, an IRS scenario. So if 1,003 IRS tax returns are reviewed, And it is found that 110 have errors. Find the probability, 
that a randomly oops randomly selected return has an error has an error okay that's a, a lot to write but um, if you want to write it down, you might want to pause the video at this moment, write it all down, because I'm going to need the space in a moment to work it out. But before we do that, let's talk about some key phrases. If 1,003 IRS tax returns are reviewed and it is found that 110 have errors, find the probability that A, randomly selected return, has an error. This phrase here, that A, randomly selected return, the fact that we're just taking one return, that's pretty classic in terms of basic probability. For basic probability, we're usually only grabbing one item. In fact, it's always got to be one item if it's basic probability because we just deal with a single fraction that talks about the single probability of that event. So it's always one event. In this case, selecting the return is the one event, and we're looking for that return to be one that has an error. And so a single thing selected is going to become a key phrase for us to indicate that we might be dealing with basic probability. We'll see other kinds of probabilities often only take one item, but um, this one will just be taking one item and won't have any extra key phrases to indicate any other technique of probability. As we learn the other techniques, we'll realize that there are special key terms that will indicate what kind of probability we're dealing with. For this one, just the fact that we're grabbing only one item is going to help us realize that it's basic probability. Okay, so it's going to be a single fraction, and the fraction is going to have this structure because this problem is working from a sample. We took a sample of IRS tax returns and want to know the probability that the return has an error. So I'm going to work with this phrase and start my statement out just like that. I guess we could work right from here above. So let's change this. Instead of probability of A, I'm going to say probability of an error and use the parentheses like that. And then I'm going to look at the number of, let's change this a little bit, right? We'll say the number of returns that have an error, that have an error, and then we're going to divide by the number of re total possible observations we made, or in this case, the number of total returns looked at. The total number of returns reviewed. Okay, so let's try to find those numbers in the data here. The number of returns that have an error, well it said 110 have an error, so we have that value. And then it said the total number of returns reviewed, that's going to be 1003. So that's our fraction. To solve the problem, we just have to form a ratio of those two numbers. Okay, so forming our fraction then, we're going to say the probability that we find an error is going to be equal to 110 divided by the total number of observations, 1003. And then if you work that out into a decimal, let's see what that turns out to be. We'll have 110 divided by 1,003, and we end up with the answer 0 0.1096 dot dot dot, and we can say that that's approximately 10.96%. Okay, and that's it.